What's up YouTube? Another little update. This is going to be part three of the series for the wall build here. If you haven't checked it out, I got the full build blog on jeepandbase.com. You also can go there for your full throttle, DC audio, and box designs, and plenty of other things. Um, and then you can also get us on Instagram at Too Loud For You or Facebook Jeep and Bass Official. So we're getting back to working on this thing. As you can tell, the wall's gone. I put in a long two days to get to this point. Uh, so as you can see, she's pretty much gutted back to near stock condition. Well, maybe not stock, but as close as we're gonna get. Um, I've cleared out a lot of spray foam that's gonna be in the way, and we're gonna start planning out uh, the build. So uh, I think what we're gonna start with is the roof here. We're gonna do a solid roof. Uh, nothing crazy, but I'm gonna probably uh, have to cut these roof braces out of here and just get rid of them. They aren't really doing much and they're in the way. And I'm gonna make a piece of wood that fits the roof pretty well. And uh, we'll stick it up there and I'll be our foundation to get started on the wall. So uh, that's gonna be first. And then uh, see where the video takes us. But this is our... Uh, what we're working with is that roof. Where those braces are going right there. And I gotta clean it really good. So we got this thing 100% gutted at this point. I mean, I did everything. I did the foam, I did the sound deadeners that I want to move. I rerouted a bunch of wires. I think actually I might tuck these through here or something, but the factory for some reason ran a bunch of wires right here. So I got them moved inside and uh, made sure these sides are square so that we can literally put the wall on the side of the car and the floor is cleared out. So we have a fresh slate. Gone ahead and sanded the roof a little bit. I'm gonna leave that sound in there alone. I don't know that it's gonna be much of a problem. I'm gonna put so much of this uh, construction adhesive on there, I think it's gonna be okay. And the wall will hold it up. And when I go and finish this up, I'm gonna put some trim around it and it's gonna hold it all itself in. So we got some cool plans of the roof. Uh, so stick around and wait for that because uh, it should be interesting. So what I'm going to do, like I explained earlier, is actually just make a sheet of half inch that fits the roof really well. And I think if I measure it out, it should measure out pretty square um, with some round corners. So I'm going to plot that out. I got my sheet of half inch out here. A little trick I learned from Bobby Gately. It's a little easier. You lay your sheet out on some scraps and you set your uh, saw blade depth to where it just barely gets through the sheet. You can cut on the floor without uh, too many issues because they're a little harder to handle on the table saw and this table saw is pretty small. So, uh, so I'm going to start cutting this sheet up. I'm going to leave it as one piece and try to install it as one piece. So that's going to involve some precise measuring and layout and time and test fit. But I think should be doable. I'm gonna take some two by fours and prop them up to hold it in place. All right, so I got the uh, roof kind of held in on stilts right now. A little test fit. As you can see, it fits pretty damn close actually. Very square roof, I had no idea. The only uh, trimming I have to do is up here, these corners, and I think I wanna try to make it roll up a little further, I'm not sure. I'm definitely going to trim the corners a little bit and then it should be actually already ready to go. I'll get this thing in tonight, let it dry up for a few days. I'm going to be uh, doing some other stuff next few days. You guys will see videos later on of what I'm up to on my Jeep.
All right, everybody. So uh, a little update here. I didn't get the film of actually putting this in, but you get the gist of it. Basically, we just uh, had two people and stuck it up in there and uh, propped these up. It's stuck on with some Loctite construction adhesive, the 3X. Used about nine tubes and just smeared it all over the place. So uh, nothing too exciting there, nothing that you couldn't do. But uh, it all fits and it's been sitting for about four days, which is longer than it needed to do. But uh, let me get back here. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and knock down my two by fours and uh, then we're gonna see what we wanna do about the rest of the day. I'm thinking uh, there's some stuff on the floor I need to patch up. There's these plugs that uh, one fall out. And uh, he's got some issues over here with uh, with open floor. So I want to make sure everything's patched up before I cover it so that we don't have any water coming in. So uh, I'm going to pull these guys. And just hope everything does what it was supposed to. And you'll see the roof kind of come down a bit, which is what I wanted it to. We're in the now, looking at uh, some of the prep work. Uh, I went over a lot of things, but at this point, I've cut out pretty much everything I want to get out of the way. I've cleaned it to the extent I really need to. I might do one more vacuum. But uh, there's a few things that I found that I wanted to seal up before putting the wall in. If you're gonna do a permanent wall build or something that's gonna be in there for a long time, uh, you do need to be concerned with uh, water coming in. Uh, cause you don't want water coming up and rusting anything or uh, you know getting your wood so uh, I have a bunch of old holes in here I have to patch and I'm gonna let that set up before I put anything on the floor here I think I'm gonna start building the floor first of the wall and then work back up towards the roof um, so today I was gonna go around and try to patch things back in I like to use this roofing flashing stuff from Loctite uh, normally I get what's called the SP, uh, I think it's SP30L something, but uh, this is what they had, and I, I don't know if they ever changed the name or what, but it seems to be the same stuff, and uh, it's pretty messy, so I always wear a pair of gloves on this, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and glue this guy down. This stuff is kind of a slow dry time. Um, but once it does, it will never go away. It is some tough stuff. I've used it a lot to uh, attach roof bracing. So it's good stuff. A little excess here. I'm just gonna just cover up these holes. It doesn't have to be super nice. It gets covered by wood. I just don't want water coming in, so. I'm just going to go around and anything I see I'm going to patch today before I get too far along. I do think this is one of those steps that uh, defines the difference between a good, really well put together and thought out build versus one that wasn't as thought out, was done on more of a budget, uh, wasn't quite up to uh, the standards I like to do. Um, you know, just the forethought of what you're going to be up against in the future. And, you know, when I'm laying out a build in a car, I just think number one, uh, you know, you don't want water in it. So this is kind of an important thing to me. And, uh, you know, hopefully I get them all and let you guys think about the prep work being as important as the actual installation itself on, uh, on your builds. So uh, I'm going to go around, get the last few here, and we'll move on to the next step.
All right, so the first two parts of the wall are in. I'm kind of using them to somewhat establish where everything's gonna be. Very uh, basic so far and uh, not super clean yet because this is just kind of the groundwork. First layer is always gonna be just a lot of fitting and trimming. But uh, if you noticed, we use the silicone in between the wood and the metal. I like to do that so that the wood's not completely on the metal at all times and uh, it kind of helps stick it down. And then I put some of the self-tappers just to ensure everything's good, making sure I don't hit anything under the car. And then uh, we got our slant coming down. I'm gonna duplicate it on this side, same idea. And uh, then we can box over this after the side hung where I'll go about doing that, but uh, we got some options. So uh, a few little things here. It's already pretty strong, I'm surprised. Without the framework, it's being stuck to the floor the way it is, it's already doing all right. So I, uh, I don't have any worries. Kind of kicked it out over into here because I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, if I can tie into that or what's gonna happen. These wheel wells are uh, were beat in at some point before we touched it, so I don't know what of that I'm gonna be able to utilize. I'd rather keep things somewhat square and just come in and maybe have a little pocket, I don't know. It's not gonna be a huge deal. It's the bottom chamber of the sixth order, so there's little spaces. Uh, I could try to use them. We'll just see how it goes. So I think what I'm gonna do, go ahead and duplicate that, build our center, and then maybe build up a side and see what a side piece does while it fits in there. And then that can be boxed in around the wheel well. And that really establishes the foundation of the wall. If I can get that done on both sides here. I think tonight I'm going to just stay uh, focused on the floor. It's about 107 out today, I think, forecast. And uh, I think we're in the hottest of it. And I'm, I'm feeling all right, but don't want to overdo. Anyway, I'm going to keep on chucking away at this. I did uh, put some blocks under this piece because there is a gap as you can see on the far end I uh, blocked it up so it has a little bit more foundation to stick to the car so try to duplicate that and show you guys everybody so next part we were going to work on was putting the sides in this thing and uh, I had to run some new wire for him we're adding a few more speaker channels and uh, I was cleaning up some old wiring so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get this out of my way I want to plug it over here, make it pop out this little hole. I noticed a problem with his remote wire here. It got crushed under the seat at some point and it uh, broke the wire. So, I'm an easy dealer. I uh, have a few more of these in stock. This is the base remote wire for the amp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these things together this way. Stretch this guy out a little bit. And uh, I have a cool little network of pipes in here that are inside the foam when I originally built the wall. So all these wires, this convenient little spot in the two door Cherokee to go through the V pillar and into my pipe here. And then they come out here towards the back side. I'm going to pull the original through and see how it pulls uh, the new one with it. Hopefully my tape's on good enough that it doesn't come off. It looks like we're almost at the top here. Make sure I can help guide it through a little bit so we don't lose it.
right, so we got it out here on the other end. And undo my tape. So you can see right here, if she'll focus on me, the, uh, the wire. So I spent some time making this piece. What I like to do is uh, get the overall measurements of the area I'm looking to measure. So that would be here to here, here to down here. And then get other measurements and notch out places that I don't want. So that way I'm not putting a bunch of time into making as many templates. And the pieces end up fitting pretty good once you've done a few trial and error fits. So as you can see, that's the uh, side piece I'm starting with. So it'll be the first layer. And it touches all the way to the side of this and uh, up near the window area. It doesn't touch the window. I don't want it to touch the window. And then it sits on the wheel well. So uh, whenever I install parts into the car, I'll silicone whatever metal is touching. And then uh, screw it down where I can. This one I have a line right here that I can screw down. As you can see there's this bracing. And then uh, once this is in, I can build out this thing. You know, have a little, little uh, build out of that. And then we'll go ahead and put a roof in it and make 45s that come into this and it will patch itself together. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. But uh, first things first is I need to copy this guy for the other side so I don't waste a bunch of time trying to make a duplicate. Um, turns out this one fits really well over there also. Uh, so we got lucky there. Sometimes the cars aren't perfectly symmetrical, but we got lucky. So I'm gonna show you guys how I copy this and uh, we'll go from there. So I went ahead and cut out a piece that was almost the same shape. I kind of traced it out to this one and left a little bit of the gap between my line and my cut here. And I'm gonna basically stick them together. I got some double-sided tape right here. And we'll peel off the backing. Now we'll go ahead and stick on our piece that we're going to copy. I'm try to line it up here pretty good before the tape, tape takes it. Press it down really good. Everywhere you can. Now the pieces are stuck together pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a router and a flush trim bit and have it exactly copy the piece that's stuck onto. So let me go get that set up and we'll show you the bit and the process of doing that. go ahead and show you what the flush trim bit looks like here. Here you go. To me, this is the number one reason to have a router is this bit right here. It's got the uh, bearing on the top and the cutting flutes. And basically what it does is the bearing will ride on the piece you want to match and the flutes cut the piece you're making. So what you gotta do is set the depth here so that the bearing 
is only on the wood you're copying. This is the kind of a cheap router, so adjusting it's a little bit time consuming. I think I lost one of the parts to it anyway. One thing I might recommend doing is uh, clamping the entire thing down to your table you're working on. I didn't really do that, but uh, I was kind of moving around. But now we got two identical pieces. You'll see how flush they are. I'll show you what that looks like. And uh, now we can actually get them ready to put in the car. So unplug it before you take your bit back out, before you do anything else with it. And you should be good. So basically, Harbor Freight. Uh, no, I think this is the lowest. This is Ryobi, Home Depot Ryobi with the Diablo cutting bit. And probably the whole thing together, you're looking at a good couple bits that were useful are probably this, a roundover bit, a 45 bit, and a spiral bit. And you're probably looking at a buck 50 to have all that. But uh, this is very versatile. You get to do a lot with it. We'll show you more as we go. So as you guys probably know, the camera went out of focus and never went back into focus. So you didn't really get to see enough. But you could hear me and you can see what the uh, that bit does is make these identical. So sorry for the camera issues, but it's 110 out today and I'm having a hard time making everything perfect in this world. <laughs> but there's our pieces. Now, uh, it's nice to have a little pry tool, something you can stick between and pry them apart. So, uh, I know there's a few different kinds. I just use anything I got to pry them apart. But uh, then you clean your tape off and you put your tools away and you're ready to install. So, we'll get this thing lined out and we'll show you how this goes. And I got a little cleanup to do. So. So I'm going to get this thing ready for installation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it where I want it. And we're going to go ahead and use this piece of wood. I don't know if you can see this part, but I'm lining up the front of my bottom to the front of this piece to make sure it's exactly where I want it. So now that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and take an eighth inch drill bit. I have it marked out where I can attach this in a pre-drill. Two holes without moving this board into the piece and into my metal. Okay. Now that those are set up, that'll be enough to get me started. They went in there, right here. And then, since I'm gonna pretty much install this now, i yeah, get my silicone tube out. Ooh. And then I'm gonna put a fat bead wherever there will be wood contact to metal contact. That'll help stick it in place and uh, protect it, I would think. Probably better than just having wood and metal by itself.
get this piece, put it back where it goes for the last time. Check the alignment. I got myself tappers here, and drill set up, and hopefully we can find the old holes. Check with my drill here. Yeah, we're right on them. So these should be able to chase those holes pretty well. Hold it up with my foot. And then uh, just hold it in pretty good. That one found its hole. There it is. It's not wanting to go in that one. So I might have to try this again sometime. Somehow. There, found that one. So I'm just going to keep doing this and sucking that piece down where it goes. So we're going to add a bunch. Freaking strong. And it's barely uh, secured at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and run down the rest of this and uh, patch in any of the silicone. And then we'll have a side pretty much established. It fits in really snug with the window seal here. I don't think it's going to ever hurt anything, especially once the wall is tied together. And we'll obviously have a bunch more layers. I'm thinking three layers all around, or at least uh, three layers in the roof and sides. You know. So. I think uh, I'm going to continue on let you guys see what the finished product is. I'm going to go ahead and get the other side put in too. So a little bit of work ahead of us, but this is kind of how I'm laying the foundation of the car from based on the car. Uh. All right, everybody. So I'm going to call it a night here. Getting really worn out. It's been a long day. I worked before I even came here. But get a little bit done here, as you can see side is in and I've boxed in the wheel well on this side pretty well. Get a view back here and you can see really how much room we have now. I really opened it up. I did a lot of patching to get this bunch of stuff in and fitting. And this is only the first layer so it's not gonna look that good. I've been walking over it and cutting it and but get your view of kind of what the shell is going to be like. So we'll just keep on putting layers in this thing until it's strong. It's actually already pretty damn strong in my opinion, but I'm not going to leave it. I mean, it's solid. It's not moving. Got this side in. So I'm um, going to box this in probably tomorrow. Just the same as this side. Then we'll move up towards the roof. I think you're gonna stick a layer on the roof and then get some 45s. And once that's done, we're pretty much done with the first layer as far as around the shell goes. I'm not gonna be putting the back on quite yet. It'll probably happen as they go. Pretty exciting though. All right guys, we're gonna call this a video. I've got a lot of work done, and this is pretty much the beginning of the wall. 
so you get a pretty good sense of where it's going and we'll keep you updated as we go so anyway we're gonna call that a video make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification youtube jeep and bass you also can visit jeepandbass.com for all your dc audio needs we sell full throttle and some box designs Keep them busy on there. You can get this decal like right here on there too. And we also have the uh, DB decals. This one had the 155 at the time. So you can get all that cool stuff. So thanks for watching. Please follow the video and keep on keeping on. <laughs>